Well, good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Doc Severson. I will be your host and instructor tonight as we talk about trading and taking those high probability intraday trades. Welcome aboard, folks. Now, before we get started, here is our standard risk disclosure. You guys know the drill. This essentially says that if you don't treat this like a business, this is going to be the most expensive hobby you'll ever undertake. I will be not recommending anything to buy or sell tonight. This is purely educational. Here's our copyright disclaimer. If you'd like to distribute or otherwise use the information in this presentation, I understand the desire to do so, but please, before you do that, contact us at the numbers below or the email address and uh, before you share. Thank you. Now about Theotrade, we are a trading education firm based out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Myself, I'm in Westerville, Ohio. We are specializing in education for options, futures, and stocks. We are run by veteran professional traders, all of whom have at least 15 years of experience and are first and foremost experienced trading educators. We are not a registered advisory service, nor a brokerage firm. Okay, so understand that trading has risk. Make sure you're using risk capital for anything that we're talking about. Trading involves real money. We are here to help you mitigate the risks in the market while learning a skill that can last you for life. So, some of you know who I am. My name is Doc Severson again. I am a husband, father of three, student pilot, reformed engineer. I quit my six-figure telecom job to trade full-time. I'm also a spokesman for Rogaine. It's just not working for me, though. I'm going to resign that commission. I, uh, As far as, as Theotrade, I am the Options, Technical Analysis, and Neurolinguistic Programming. So that's a, a trading mindset. Coach for Theotrade for the past year and a half. I like to think of myself as an innovator. I don't want to just say the same old things in the same old tired manner. There's always a unique method of reaching out to people and illustrating how they can make changes in their own trading. So I've been trading myself for about 21 years and I've seen it. I don't want to say I've seen it all, but I've seen quite a bit in the last 21 years. And I've been, uh, even though we're not going to be talking that much about Thinkorswim tonight, I, will, I have been working on that platform for the last 11 years. I've also written a book. Some of you may or may not have read this, which is called Hacking the Holy Grail. It's available on Amazon. That's what it looks like. Okay, enough about me. Let's talk about our learning objectives for tonight, the reason for you to be here, reason for you to be here. I want to talk about why today's market is so tough to trade. I want to talk about why risk for traditional strategies is high. Maybe you've found this out lately. I want to talk about the edges available in today's market. Yes, there are edges available in today's market. They may not be where you're looking for them. We're going to be talking about employing these edges in a defined strategy, which I will share with you tonight. And I'll give you some examples. So, and then we'll wrap things up with next steps and how to incorporate this signal into your trading. So welcome aboard, folks. If you just joined us tonight, we're just getting started. Tonight's presentation is not about some holy grail method. It, everything that we do here at TheoTrade is based on common sense, hard work, based on fundamental principles. So everything I talk about tonight works, but it also requires work on your part. There are no silver bullets in this business, guys. It's about observing what the market wants and then creating setups that harvest this edge. It's all common sense. Just a word here before we get going tonight on housekeeping. like to run a tight ship here. So yes, you will get a recording of tonight's session before you ask. I know some of you are about to do that. I'm going to go through very quickly through the material. I tend to go through this stuff very fast. Yes, I may have a lot of slides. I have a lot of visuals for you tonight, but I tend to motor through this relatively fast. I want to make sure we get to everything. I want to respect your time. You've taken time out of what might be a holiday week for you. You've taken time away from you and your family for the evening taking time away from Wheel of Fortune, want to get back to that, right? So we're going to go through this very quickly tonight. So please do me a favor here. Let's work together. Hold your questions until the end of the session, and then I'll be happy to answer those. 
We will have staff online. If you have admin questions, we've got Don out there. We've got Jeff out there. We may have Tony. We may have Corey. We've got a whole team out there. If you have problems or you have a question about how to get forward with something, let us know. Part one, here we go. What is wrong with today's market? So the, the question on the table is what has changed? If you've been trading for any length of time, you may have found it difficult to find any edge in today's market. So why is that? Why is that? Well, a lot of the problem is due to the fiat currency that we have floating around the system for the past few years. So Ben Bernanke stepped up to the microphone at Jackson Hole back in 2010, in August of 2010, and said yes, for the very first time, he admitted to the American public that we're going to be printing more currency. We're going to be printing dollars out of thin air. But he called it a cool name. He called it quantitative easing, which made it you know, a better sell because it sounded official. Okay, so that started in 2010. However, he really, really ramped it up in 2013 when it was obvious that it wasn't really having as much effect as he wanted it to. So as a result of that, we've got just literally trillions of dollars floating around the system right now trying to find a home in a very low interest rate environment. And in fact, it's such a low interest rate environment that we have, we still have negative rates in some countries out there, negative rates. Would you be rather, would you rather have your, yourself charged to keep money in the bank? Would you re rather be charged an interest rate to keep money in the bank or would you pull it out and find a home and try to get some yield for it? Well, that's what everybody's doing, right? So as a result of this, investors have no fear today. There is just no fear. They know that every dip is going to be bought in the short term because we have this excess liquidity out there. We have algos running into momentum mode, buying every dip that's out there, pushing everything up as possible. It's like un unlike anything we've ever seen before. Okay, so because of these low rates and no fear, there's an incessant search for yield across all asset classes. Alpha is very difficult to find across the board. Okay. So because of all these factors, you know, just finding yield out there, just finding yield with low interest rates, trying to find dividends, find any kind of anything out there at all, has become much more difficult. We don't have two-way tape. So when everything gets pushed up, you're either buying at the highs or you're looking for some type of microscopic pullback. Now, because of all this, we have realized volatility is near all-time lows. I mean, when we have an ATR or average true range on the S&P 500 below 10 points a day, we know that we've hit rock bottom on ATR. So this is not only the realized volatility of the price movements as measured here by this ATR, but it's also implied volatility is at all-time lows as well, too. It's rolling around in the gutter. I mean, at some point here, we may end up printing a VIX below the nine handle. Who knows? Anything could happen these days. This has created some unusual and challenging conditions for today's option trader because we used to be able to run on an insurance company model, right? Insurance company model means that you take risk out of the market, you're paid for it, as long as you can manage your risk. But now we're running on the insurance company model as if we're up in Montana selling hurricane insurance. Nobody wants it. There's no risk premium that's out there. This has created very challenging conditions. So even though the trend of the market, let's talk about the trend for a minute here. The trend is defined, right? But the short-term entry points are getting harder and harder to find. Let me draw this out here. So when we had our, you know, this was the Brexit condition that we had, and here was the election from last year. This was about a year ago. And so even after that, we were getting some decent pullbacks and decent entry points. But you're seeing now, everything is being compressed. We're just not getting any pullbacks now. We're just going, each pullback is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. There's just no way on this train. There's no handles. It's left the station. This is why it's become so much more difficult to trade, especially for Swing traders. Now, if you're an options seller, this has not been good news for you. This has not been good news. So even though we've had generally kind of flat markets, the problem here is 
You're not sure if the next ramp is going to take out your call spreads if you're selling above the current market, or whether the next decline is going to absolutely run you over, as has been the, the case for forever, right? When volatility comes into the market, it always comes to the downside. So that fear of that decline is keeping buddy, everybody away from these. So what this means is that so many traders are standing on the sidelines. They're standing on the sidelines. They don't know what to do. There's no alpha out there. They're tied in knots. They don't know what to do. So they'd rather just stand on the sidelines and wait for that inevitable dip to come whenever that is, but they've been waiting months for that. So the problem here is that the risk is not worth the tiny reward. This is a musical chairs market. As long as the music keeps playing, the market keeps going up, the dips keep getting bought, the tried and true methods of earning income in the market are not working. So let's see what we can do about it. Now that I've stated the problem, I think most people that I've talked to understand what the problem is out there, or maybe you didn't know what the problem was. Maybe you've just started trading recently, and this is all that you know about, but it is a problem. So let's see what we can do about this. And we'll start to do that in part two by discussing what edges are available to us. So we always want to know what our edge is in the market. For years, our edge used to be selling option premium. That was an eroding asset, right? As soon as you set up the position, the position, the, the volatility was, a, well, that premium was eroding as fast as possible. And it's just not happening anymore, especially with volatilities of, 6% at the money, right? So what type of trade is the market supporting today? Now, this is what I see a lot of times is we work with a lot of retail traders and a lot of folks are out there kind of bemoaning the fact of, hey, when are we going to get the market that we used to have back in 2007? Or remember that market that we had even back in, in January of 2015? That was pretty awesome back then. I can't wait for that to well, guys, we can sit around and talk about that stuff, but we can't trade the market that we want. Only the one that we have, only the one that's in front of us. So this is always our job is to figure out what the market is giving us in terms of edge. What edge is available to us right here, right now? Okay, so every character of market shows us an edge if we bother to listen. This is what we have to do is we have to become empathetic. We have to listen to what the market wants to give us. Most of the time, though, we're insisting that yesterday's strategies work in today's market. So what we're doing is we're kind of banging that square peg into the round hole. And certainly I've been guilty of this in the past as well, too. When market changed, I kept playing the same thing again and again and, and all of a sudden realizing, wait a minute, this isn't working too well. I've got to revamp my game. I certainly had to do that back in 2013 where we got into the perpetual uptrend. So today's market shows a quiet and trending character. Now, let me stop here for a second because some of you may not know what I'm talking about here. So there's basically four different types of character that a market will display. The most common one is actually quiet and trending. Now, quiet and trending is where we have quiet volatility. We have measured pullbacks. And typically, we'll get this sort of stair-stepping type of action. Quiet and trending, though, almost always gives way to sideways and volatile. All of a sudden, the market gets to be very unstable and ends up trading in a very loud, large, sideways range. If you want an example of this, look at what happened to the market back in August of 2015 through approximately the Brexit move of last year. So that was around late June of 2016. We had sideways and volatile character throughout that entire time. From there, one of two things will happen. Either the market will start to transition into what's called trending and volatile, which is a nice way of putting a bear market. If you want to look at this, look at the transition that we had from 2007 to 2008, and that's an excellent example of a transition into trending and volatile. We don't see it that often. In fact, we haven't seen it for nine years now. The usual transition is going back to quiet and trending again, quiet and trending. Now, occasionally we'll also have quiet and sideways 
And if you want an example of that, you can go back to the summer of 2015 before we had the big release to the downside. But most of the time we have these three different types of character in here. We have these three different types of character. This is normally what we see. But right now, guess what, guys? We're in quiet and trending. We've been in quiet and trending since the Brexit move, even before last year's election. So for the last year and a half, we've been in quiet and trending. And this will keep going until it stops. And I, I hate to be opaque about something like that, but like 2013 was a good analog for what we're going through right now. Everybody got to the end of 2013 and said, wow, a 30% move in 2013. This can't continue. This must go into some type of volatility. Guess what? We tacked on another few dozen percent in 2014 as well, too. So quiet and trending typically will go for quite some time. Okay, so there we go. That is the quiet and trendy character. All right, so let's move on. So quiet and trendy character is going to be stair-stepping price behavior, low volatility, relative order versus other types of character. So I hate to use the word predictable because as soon as you say the word predictable in the market, it will have it will find a way uh, to make fun of you. But if there is one type of character that is more regular than others, it is going to be quiet and trending. Quiet and trending is much more linear versus other types of market behavior, such as sideways and volatile. It does not have much linearity whatsoever. So this generally works best to be buying gamma. So you want the price to move. If we were selling gamma, like setting up iron condors or credit spreads, we don't want the price to move. We want it to stay in one place and not move whatsoever. So if we want to make money in this type of character, we want to be buying gamma. And that's typically through long options, or we're net long the options. So that's either a debit spread or just outright buying an option. So it's not true that today's market is not moving. So even though we just showed you that chart and we said, hey, this thing is just barely moving along here, it's just barely trending, it all depends on your perspective. I don't know if you guys remember seeing the movie Men in Black. I'm dating myself a little bit here. That was a long time ago. But if you recall, that cat was carrying the galaxy inside of that pendant around its neck. So it's all a matter of perspective in terms of what you think is big or small. Because what we typically do is we go outside in, we look at the market and we say, from an outside in perspective, we say, oh, look at this from a long way away, it's just not moving, we're not seeing anything. And then we start to zoom in and all of a sudden we see a lot more detail. We see more structure. So on a chart that looks like this in a normal daily time frame, this is a daily chart of the S&P 500. If we zoom in, we're gonna see all kinds of movement, all kinds of detail. And this is the benefit that you get from being available intraday. Intraday is where we're going to find this volatility. So the other thing that we're seeing is that there's probably never been a better time to buy options due to the extraordinarily low premium. So I come from the school of as soon as I started learning about options, I was told, hey, never buy an option. That's what the rookies are doing. You want to sell an option. Selling an option puts the odds in your favor, and I bought into that. And that was absolutely true for the longest period of time. Selling an option gave you an incredible edge in the market. But we never really discussed as to when was a good time to buy an option. Well, guess what, folks? It doesn't get any better than this. This is the time to buy options. This is the time where they become incredibly cheap, and you can use that leverage to your advantage. You can use that explosive leverage to your advantage with I would say reduced cost in terms of all the other complexities that come with buying a long option. So like I said, if there's ever been a time to buy an option, this is it now. Doesn't get much better. We don't have long options on sale like this normally. So the very thing that most of us are complaining about, which is this sort of market character that doesn't seem to fit with what we want to do with it, are actually edges that we can take advantage of in today's market, believe it or not. So let's do a summary here. Edges in today's market. What edges do we have in today's market? Quiet and trending means 
linear. Linear means that things make sense. When you look at the market, it makes sense. Lower highs, lower lows, downtrend, higher highs, higher high, higher highs, higher lows, uptrends. Everything seems to make more sense. There's an expression which goes, everybody's a genius in a bull market. Well, guess what? It's because of the linearity. Everything makes sense. Prices bounce where they're supposed to bounce. They go in the direction that they're supposed to do. The swing lengths are generally all about the same. There's a certain set of symmetry and structure that occurs at no other time than a quiet and trending market. So the low realized volatility actually means more small time frame structure to trade. So it's less whippy. It's less whippy, if that's a technical term. The low implied volatility also means fewer unintended consequences of buying options. These are things like, you know, time value decay or volatility crush, which you have heard about and have been in fear of. Well, guess what? If the volatility is on the floor, there's not much to crush. And that's kind of what we're going to be going into today, starting with the chart setup. So we're diving right into this right now. What tools can we use to take advantage of these conditions? What tools can we use to take advantage of these conditions? First off, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on the NASDAQ. Now, I could also do this on the S&P, but there's, there are specific reasons why I'm picking on the NASDAQ here. First of all, to, to some degree, because our room at TheoTrade is very NASDAQ specific, and it's because of a lot of day traders use the NASDAQ, but it's also... The biggest, right now, the NASDAQ is where everything's happening right now. We're getting great volume. It's a terrific instrument. It trends well. There's every reason in the world to look at the NASDAQ right now. So secondly, if we use the NASDAQ, how do we trade direction? What I want you to think about here, and I'm a big believer in using analogies, because you have to realize how much you already know. You already understand intrinsically from an intuitive level how all of this works. Everything that I'm going to talk about tonight, you already understand this intuitively. And what I have to do is to help bring that out of you. I have to show you how to connect the dots to realize how much you already know. So if you think about a river, which way does the current flow? Well, it goes downstream, doesn't it? It goes downstream. So the current always flows downstream. It's always going to be going downstream. Gravity is a wonderful thing. So that's the analogy that I want you to think of in terms of the trades that we're going to take. I don't want you paddling upstream. So no matter how cool it looks when you have one of those little kayak things and the guy's found some little eddy pool and he's actually going backwards on the river, that looks cool, but that, that's not going to last for very long. If you actually want to make progress paddling upstream, it's going to take a tremendous amount of effort. I want you to simply trade downstream. I want you to go downstream with the current. I want you to lay back in that kayak and just let the current take you downstream. That's how simple I want the trades to be. So let's talk about trends and swings for a second. I want to define some, some, concept, some concepts here for you. Okay, so trends, if you talk about trends, a trend is something where you have your typical higher highs and higher lows, right? You've all heard about that, or you have lower highs and lower lows. That's a downtrend. So you've heard about uptrends, you've heard about downtrends, you've heard about the Dow theory. Behind those, you've all you've all processed this and you're you're at some level of expertise in terms of being able to identify trends. Now within them, what we have are swings. So each one of these is a swing. It's a swing. Some are counter trend swings. Some are with the trend. Right? So some of these are corrective. Some of these are impulse. Right? Each one of these is a swing, regardless of which way it's going. So that's kind of the definition here between a trend and a swing. Now, what we'll also see within the market is I'm not a big believer anymore of this whole concept of overbought and oversold. I think that was, those are back in the days when we used to have nice, wide volatility and things would move around in a range-bound manner. 
and things would go to overbought and then they would fade back down. And then they would go to oversold and they would bounce back up again. That just doesn't seem to happen anymore. That may have happened 10 to 12 years ago where all of a sudden oscillators were the greatest thing out there, but no longer. What is overbought becomes much, 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 much more overbought now to the point of ridiculousness. And then it goes a little further before it actually thinks about reversing. And what is oversold can go much lower than that, as we all know. So what I think is more useful for us is range expansion, range contraction. This is how things actually move in today's market. You'll see trends, range expansion. That'll move into range contraction or resting or consolidation, however you want to call it. And then we see the resumption of the trend or even maybe sometimes, in some cases, we'll see a reversal. And isn't this the way that things work? You know, I mean, if you're going to climb up a mountain, you don't just run up the side of the mountain. You run as hard as you can, and then you consolidate. You catch your breath, maybe sit down, you rest, you recharge, and then you're ready to go again. Or this also represents like every day during the week, this is what we do. This is the way the markets move. The market is just a big organism, just like anything else. And this is how it moves. So this is range expansion, range contraction. So now that we have these concepts kind of on the table, this is what we're going to use to be able to identify edge within the trade. So if we look at this chart, let's get back to the pen a minute here. We can see that we have range expansion, we have range contraction, range expansion, range contraction, more of in a flag manner. It just goes back and forth, guys. It just goes back and forth. Range expansion, range contraction. Range expansion, contraction. Expansion, contraction. They are getting smaller, aren't they? They're getting smaller the further we go up. This does not bode well. This is typically what you see when the, when the range just gets down to nothing. This is when we start to see volatility kicking in again, okay? But that's another story for another day. But range expansion, range contraction is something that we see constantly in today's market. So we're going to trade the swings that are in the direction of the major trend when we can. So we want to go downhill, right? We don't want to be trading counter trend. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make intraday. They want to catch everything that walks or crawls. If you want to trade downstream, trade in the direction of the major trend when you can. And then we can use a smaller time frame to identify the entry point on that larger swing within the trend. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Now we do this by using parent and child fractal charts. Don't let the name scare you. You'll understand what I mean here in just a second. So I'm going to use a parent or a larger time frame to understand what direction the current is flowing in. It's kind of like that outside in. Right? When you look at a map, the first thing you look at is maybe, well, let me look at the country first. Okay, what state am I going to? All right, now what city am I going to? You're going outside in. This is a common concept to understand how to get somewhere. So this parent time frame is called my anchor chart. And this, by the way, this is how I trade with everything that I do. This is not something that's just used intraday. This is part of a grander system. It's a larger system that I use for swing trading, for position trading, intraday, day trading, scalping, everything. So the anchor chart tells me what direction to go in. The child time frame tells me where to enter. It's, very, it's actually very simple. This is called my signal chart. So I've got an anchor chart and a signal chart. And I'll show you an example here in just a second. I use what's called a factor of five. I separate the time frames by a factor of five. So if we wanted to set something up like this, we could do, like if we had a signal chart out here, it may be two minutes. We would have an anchor chart over here, maybe at 50 minutes. That would be a nice combination. Usually the 25 to one works better works well for something like this. So 2 times 25 is 50. So we're going to use 50 minutes for this, 2 minutes for this. You can even use these with tick charts. So if you're going to use this with like a 100 tick chart for your signal chart, 
we're going to use 2500 over here for the anchor chart and so on it's just a simple ratio between the two so this is the anchor chart this is the signal chart we're always going to have that same relationship what is special about the factor of five I don't know what it is it works really really well because what you can see is that within the anchor you can see the smaller time frame swings perfectly within these it's just a very nice relationship I will also employ the advantages of using tick charts in order to see better swings. so I like tick charts intraday if I'm trading an index I do not use tick charts if I'm trading an equity stock because you're gonna get very unpredictable results it depends on how that actually trades tick charts give you much better advantage if you're trading or charting in this case e-mini futures because of the volat or the activity that they have so now we're gonna get into the meat of this part four what kind of trading instruments and strategies we're gonna use and I'll show you some examples here so what do we trade and how do we do it futures are nearly perfect directional instrument so I'd love to use them but the problem here is that you know listening to people that come to us at Theotrade, we're like, hey, I, I'm using a different type of account, or I don't have a futures account set up, or I'm a little bit nervous of the leverage of them. I'd rather use something that's easier to trade than futures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So even though futures are a nearly perfect directional instrument, they're not for everybody. Now, what I'm going over tonight... I'm not saying that you can't use futures. In fact, futures are perfect for what we're talking about tonight. But it's not for everybody. So I want to show you a simple way that you can use something different. We could also use the underlying stock, but it's not very cost effective. If we're going to buy 100 shares of the Qs, that's going to take 15 grand, over 15 and a half grand of of margin. It's going to cost set aside that. We're not going to be able to trade that 15 and a half grand just to trade 100 shares worth. Not cost effective. Nothing is cost effective at these prices, right? So we want to chart the NQ futures, the NASDAQ futures. I want to chart them because they provide an excellent, sharp, accurate chart. But I will trade long QQQ options. Calls and puts. Remember what I said earlier. One of the edges of today's market is that we get all of that leverage that comes with, with long options at very little expense in terms of the other complications that normally come along with long options. So believe it or not, this is the one time that it totally makes sense to trade long options in today's market because you have fewer complications to go along with long options like volatility crush or like time value decay so let's get into this the Q options the Q's options that we're gonna do we're gonna do these weekly options they expire every Friday we're gonna use a sliding Delta scale depending on the day of week so the Delta of option that we trade on Monday is not going to necessarily be the same Delta that we would trade on Wednesday Thursday or Friday so depending on what day of the week it is, we're going to use a sliding delta scale. There is about a 40 to 1 ratio between the NQ and the Qs. So one QQQ point equates to 40 handles or 40 points on the NQ. So we want to target about 20 point swings on the NQ. So this is what we're looking to do on the, on the NASDAQ futures which is going to move around like this intraday. It's going to move up and down, and eventually at some point it's going to settle at some price, but it moves around quite a bit. And we're just going to look to take a 20-handle chunk of this, 20-handle chunk of this. What were we up today? We were up massively on the NQ. Well above, I think it was, what, 80 or 90 points, something like that at one point. Okay, so we're just going to tar target 20-point swings on the NASDAQ. That's all we're doing. Okay, let's get this thing out of there. There we go. Okay, so this is roughly a 25-cent gain in the option. 
So we get a 20 handle swing. That's a $25 gain per contract when we see that 20 point swing. So what are the rules? Let's put all the rules together for this. It's quite simple. So number one, and don't worry, you'll get, you'll get a copy of the slides. You'll get the, uh, the replay of this video. So don't worry about writing these things down. I'd rather you just sort of listen right now. Just sit back and listen and kind of take this in, and you'll, you can get the repetition later on on the replay. So number one, use the larger time frames. Remember that anchor chart that I talked about? To determine the current trend. So what I'm looking at is, all right, so if I'm looking at something like this, the larger time frame trend may be like in an uptrend like right now. So I want to focus on these swings here. I want to focus on these swings. So what can I do to get into those swings to the upside? Because they're currently going downstream, right? They're currently going downstream. They're going to make a simpler trade for me. And then I'm going to look for the beginning of a swing on our anchor chart. Anchor chart is the larger time frame anchor chart. I'm going to look for the beginning of a swing. And I'll show you something that will help identify that for us as well, too. Once we have a swing moving in the direction of the larger trend, move down to the signal chart. Now we're going to move from the anchor to the signal chart, and we're going to look for an entry point. So here's an example of this. And what I'm doing here, I'm going, to, I'm going to mark this all up here, so hang with me for a second. First of all, what I have here is I have a 10,000 tick. Actually, I have a couple of, um, let me erase this. I've got a couple of annotations here that are going to help. We have the anchor chart on the left. That's a 10,000 tick. And we have a signal chart on the right. That's 400 tick. If you want to get at your calculators out, if you multiply 400, times 25, you're going to find out that that equates to 10,000. So we've got our 25 to 1 ratio between the anchor and the signal chart. Now, thinkorswim is pretty slick because I can add both of these charts together in the same pane. It's called a grid. It's really nice. I do everything based on grids. So what I'm looking for here is, remember what I was saying, I'm looking for the anchor chart to start trending in the direction that I want to. And these are called Heiken Ashy candles. And they help you identify the beginning of a trend reversal. So in this case, we had a downtrend, we had red candles. Now we're starting to throw off green candles here at this point where the arrow is. So my entry happens over here at 10.08 10 a.m. because what we start to do is we start to trend in that direction. And I get a signal right here on my signal chart, entry at 10.08 a.m. So let's see how this trade worked out. It actually started to trend. It, it went the requisite 20 handles on the NQ. That's all we needed. And it took a little over an hour. It took a little over an hour. There was not anything that I had to do. I mean, you just set it up and you walk away. You get on with life. You put a limit order in. And they don't do anything. Okay, so sample trade results for something like this. You can see that this took just uh, like an hour and 12 minutes or so, 72 minutes. So 1.2 hours, net profit of 125 bucks on five contracts, 24% return on capital. Okay, this is very common to see something like this. Rule number four, the choice of option depends on direction. We're going to use puts for bearish trades, calls for bullish trades, right? So no rocket surgery there. And the day of the week will determine what delta that we use for that option. Again, very, very simple criteria so far. Number five, determine the limit exit as well as stop based on the price. Do not use option stops. Please do not use those. They will cause what we call unintended consequences. You will be stopped out of perfectly good trades for no apparent reason whatsoever. So don't do that, okay? But you can certainly set your limit exit. The, the first thing I do is once I'm filled on the trade, I immediately calculate what would it would take for me to make 25 bucks net on the trade. So I'm adding $27 onto the limit price that I get filled at. And so that accounts for $1 commissions in per contract, $1 commissions out 
Factor in, I want to get that 25 bucks. Okay. As far as the stops, you can determine what those are based on the price on the signal chart. Price in the signal chart. Simply set up an alert to let you know if something's not working, when to get out. The goal is to see one or two swings per day that we can enter on these trades. One or two swings per day. We're, we're not sitting here, you know, dedicating an entire day scalping these things, right? We want to get on with our life. We're just looking for a nice, simple intraday trade. So let's wrap things up here. You guys have been very patient. Thank you very much. I'll get to your questions here shortly. Let's put it all together. Where do you go from here? How do you apply this? How do you kind of wrap all this stuff together? Maybe some of this made sense. Maybe some of this didn't make sense. But how do you wrap it together, put it together as a strategy? Again, today's market has been difficult to trade if you view it from the same lens from a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. It's just not the same. When are we going to get back to the good old market that we remember? Hey, guys, we could wait forever waiting for this same old market that we remember. It may never return in quite the same manner. We have to roll and adapt to what's happening today. If we listen to the market, to what the market's telling us, we might find that there are strategies that are aligned with what the market's providing. We may actually find that we enjoy trading in this market. It may be more liberating than you're given in credit for. So trading the Q's options is a really laid back trade as compared to day trading, right? It's not that same. Remember, you're trading a, a limited risk instrument. What's the worst that's going to happen? What's the worst that's going to happen? is that option value goes to zero. So many times on Friday, Friday's when I'm going to have the cheapest options to deal with. There's very little of the, the premium left in them. So I'm dealing just strictly with intrinsic value at that point. So many times in the room, I will say, I'm long the queues, no stop. It's just really simple. when that happens. So you don't need as much attention. You're not worried about it. Remember, when you're on a futures contract, you don't own that futures contract. You're simply renting it for that period of time. You're renting it long. You're renting it short. You're just capturing the gains for how long you're holding that thing. But with a, with a, with a true option like this, it's a limited risk instrument. This is exactly what we want to be doing. So some recent examples just to share with you guys. So I lit this thing back up again uh, a little over a week ago. I will do this for a while, and then, then I'll start getting more into if the, if the market's moving around more. What I'll do is I will actually switch over to futures contracts. So a few days ago, I went back into this because I saw the volatility start to move around again. So you can see some of these are, you know, they're not particularly long holding times. Not everyone is a winner. Like here was a, here was a total break-even trade right there. A break-even trade, 29 cents in, 29 cents out. Here is a losing trade. I had a losing trade. Okay. Here is another losing trade. Not every trade is a winner, but they're all risk managed. They're all risk managed. Okay. Okay. Let's get on to the next one here. So what I will do is I always, and this, this actually is something I do with, with every class is that I, I do a tracking sheet like this so that I can track the strategy and see if there's any changes that need to be made. What's the what's the win rate? What's the profit factor? So typically what I will see with this is the last time I ran, this was about 72% with a about a 2.14 profit factor. So these are it's very common to see well over 50% success rate on the trades. It's very common to see at least a 1.5 profit factor. That means that you're winning more than you're losing, and your losses are contained. You're not letting your losses get away from you, and you're also getting a nice, decent win. When you're winning, you're getting at least a good chunk on there, right? So that's important. A profit factor is important. And if you can maintain well over 1.5 on your profit factor, you're going to do very, very well over time. Okay, so think about the applications for this methodology once you learn it. If you can apply it to any time frame, any strategy, once you get a better read on direction. So could you use this for 
Futures contracts, absolutely you could. Could you use this for debit spreads or credit spreads when we start to move around a little bit more? Absolutely you can. You can use it with any instrument that you want to. I'm just picking these because it's the simplest way to get started. So with increased volatility, you can apply this charting method to selling options again, setting up spreads, using futures. You don't have to ditch this and start all over again. This is one thing I'm a big believer in is, is finding one way of methodology of trading, of analyzing the market and using it and leveraging it regardless of what you're doing. I don't have a different strategy for setting up credit spreads. I don't have a different strategy for swing trading. I don't have a different strategy for intraday futures trading. They're all the same. It's just a matter of setting different time frames and slightly different methodologies. It's the same thing. This will never go out of fashion. So this method would also be directly applicable to the spiders. Actually, in some cases, this would actually be better fit for the spiders because you've got the Wednesday expiration in there as well as the Friday. So there are some advantages towards using the spiders. I just chose to use the cues for this since we have a very NASDAQ specific market right now. Now keep in mind, I want you guys to understand this, that if you have less than a $25,000 account, pattern day trader will come into effect if you trade more than three of these during the week, if you open and close during the same day. If you have more than 25,000 in your account, you will not be impacted. You will be tagged as a PDT, but it's not going to impact you. If you have less than that, it could be impacting. Please check with your broker to find out how they classify you. Also make sure you have a broker offering you flat per contract fees. If you do not have flat per contract fees, please contact us here at Theotrade because our members do get a flat fee through through thinkorswim no ticket charge okay so next steps here what do we do with this i just walked you through the basic steps of how to set up a high probability intraday trade on the queues yes you can use this methodology for any intraday trading strategy that requires precision for some of you the I'm hoping that this information gave you kind of like uh, inspiration or some kind of a ha moment and you know exactly what to do from here. Awesome. That's great. Maybe I'm slow, but it took me thousands of chart hours to get this right, to understand how to use the different time frames. Now that I've gone through that, I've done my 10,000 hours, right? I've gone through the Malcolm Gladwell thing. I get it, but it took me a long time to get there. So I don't feel like I'm giving you guys a secret because even if most people know about the setup, they're likely going to get confused by the separate time frames or not quite understand how to put it all together or what the stops are, things like that. So I have absolutely zero fear that me releasing this system or me talking about this to you guys tonight is going to suddenly cause this system to get faded or arbitraged or no longer work in the market. So for those of you that see the power of this setup using multiple fractal time frames, and you want to save a few thousand hours of experimentation to know the exact details of the setup, like, like these, like how to spot the beginning of a trend on the anchor chart. Do you know that? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. How to spot the two different entry methods on the signal chart. There's a couple of different ways that we can use, whether they're signal based or price based or how to use that embedded fractal with the RSI Laguerre. You may have noticed that study on the chart, which looks pretty cool. It's very, very useful to get a more accurate read on the charts and obtain more precise entries. How to manage your risk and maximize profits while in the trade. The best options to employ with this move. How to filter these trades with fractal energy trading principles to make sure that we're not going against a different time frame and ensure the very highest probability entries. How you can build a whole trading system around one trade setup like I do, where I don't have to reinvent the wheel for a different strategy. I just apply the same thing, perhaps at a different time frame. Okay? So to answer that, I've got a class for you guys. I actually do have a class, and it's available, believe it or not, right now. You don't have to wait until this Saturday. You guys are busy anyway this week, right? 
So I've got over three hours of live content that we did, right? So we have the slides, we have the replay video, we have the studies, we have spreadsheets that went along with us. There's a lot of ancillary information that goes along with this class. Everything is explained in step-by-step -step detail for you to employ in the market immediately. How to set up your chart to add, to add those anchor and signal timeframes. We share the charts. How to set up the RSI Laguerre study. The class was recently recorded and it's available immediately upon your sign up tonight. You can get it tonight if you want. Now we also have some bonuses here. So in addition to the live content, the slides, the tools, the study, and the ability to watch the archive video as much as you want, you'll also receive the following bonuses for signing up today. And this is only for today though. Bonus number one, fractal energy trading. If you haven't heard of this before, okay, this is my trading class. It's a five-part video series. This is five hours of instruction. This is five hours of content. There's no fluff in here. Learn how to read fractal price action. If you want to learn how to read price action, how to read charts with nothing on there at all, no studies, right? Learn how to read price. This is the basis for the high probability intraday setup. Also, how to learn how to interpret energy signals on your chart. So we talked about the energy as well, too, whether it's in trend or consolidation. It is, in my opinion, of course, one of the most innovative and accurate technical systems currently on the market. It's making price a focus for your analysis instead of some trailing study, some trailing indicator that instantly puts you a step out of most traders that are using lagging signals. So normally this would go for 150 bucks on its own, right? So that's bonus number one. Number two is the RSI Laguerre study, which you may have seen on that chart that I had up for you Okay, so the fractal energy study ties in with the trading program, shows you a way to determine energy on multiple time frames, right? The RSI and Laguerre time, which was that blue line on there, provides a very accurate way to time entries as opposed to a more linear typical oscillator. This is using the Laguerre time transform. So the RSI Laguerre with embedded fractal energy ties them both together, saves you real estate on your charts. Study is not available currently out there. You can't just download it through Thinkorswim, but we can provide it for you. You can import it from us. We do have this in Thinkorswim and Ninja Trader 8. Ninja Trader 8. Okay, retail value for this, 150 bucks. Bonus number three is a coaching session showing you how to use that study. So it's a one hour long session taught by myself on how to use the RSI Laguerre with the embedded fractal energy. Okay, another 150 bucks. If we put this all together, what is the system cost here? So if we add up the fractal energy trading program, $150, RSI Laguerre study, $150, the coaching, $150, that's $450 in bonuses, not including the class that we're talking about here. So we will include all of these if you sign up for the intraday trading class today for one time total of $97. Bucks. $97, bucks, that's it. But this special is only for today, guys. If you go to theotrade.com slash QQQ, right, theotrade.com slash QQQ, this is what you'll see out there, 97 bucks, right? So just go to this page, theotrade.com slash QQQ. I'm going to copy this into the chat window here. And let's see if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. There's the chat window. And it's already in there at 8.52 p.m. So Don has done that for me. Thank you, Don. Okay, so go out to QQQ, theotrade.com QQQ. I'm going to get to your questions in just a second here. I've got a number of FAQs that everybody asks about this stuff. Is this a trial subscription? Will there be additional billing at some point? Is this some kind of a trap? No, it's not. This is not a trial. This is a one-time $97 fee. This is it. This is what you're buying. Question, I don't have experience with options or futures. Will I be able to follow along in the class? Yes, you can do this with stock if you want to. It's just not as efficient. You could certainly just trade stock with these signals if you want to. But 
Like I pointed out before, for 100 shares in the queues, that's 15 and a half grand. So you can use options to be more efficient and just pay pennies on the dollar for these and have that leverage. Can I use this with my 401k or IRA? Yes, it works with any chart, any instrument, any time frame. You're not going to be doing intraday trading in your 401k mutual fund, but you can do anything that we talked about here in an IRA. Next question, I work full time, I can't trade during the day, can I use this program? Yes, this technique will help you secure better entries, even if you're using this strategy as more of a longer time frame swing strategy. So think about this, if you expanded the time frames on here, if you pulled them out just a little bit, maybe to a 60 minute or daily chart, things like that, you could apply the same thing, hold it maybe for a day or two, Maybe use spreads. That might be a better thing to do with using spreads so you don't have the time decay problem in there. Right? But you could just as easily do this. A question that I typically get from a lot of people is, I currently use my Elliott Wave or ADX or MACD or Stochastics, blah, 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 you know, whatever strategy that you're using out there, whatever your favorite indicator is, is my current system. Will your system help me? Or why do you think yours is better than the one I'm using? I don't. Use whatever you want to, right? But I would state that if you learn price action, you're going to increase the effectiveness of anything that you do. Price action will always give you your first possible entry into that new trend. Another question that we get is, I don't use Thinkorswim. Can this system still help me? I teach everything old school. So you'll be able to manually identify setups first using techniques and studies available through the majority of platforms first before applying that whiz-bang RSI Laguerre study. Okay, so there you go, guys. Uh, I will get to your questions here in just a second. The High Probability Intraday Trading System class. I'm the instructor. And may, available immediately tonight. Available indefinitely. So you're going to get that three-hour class as well as your bonus number one, which is the five hours of fractal energy trading. You're going to get that study for Think or Swim or Ninja Trader, whichever one works for you. Bonus number three, also using the RSI Laguerre coaching session. 97 bucks. Theotrade.com slash QQQ. Also, get full credit of this class towards a 12-month Total Theo membership. Don't forget about that. So we'll see you out there, theotrade.com slash QQQ. And at this point, I'm going to go over to the chat window. Thank you very much for your patience, and I will take your questions now.